Don't slow down. Don't slow down. Don't slow down. Don't slow down. EVs are cool because they don't make air pollutants. <laughs> This is what happens when Aaron drinks lots of caffeine. This is a NEMA 15R 120 full 15 amp socket. Can do up to 1875 watts total. The Christmas lights too, so as easy as that. All right, so this is our apartment deck. Here's the extension cable, the EBSC, and the leaf there. And we're gonna show you how it works. This is the J1772 connector on level one via that outlet. The dash charging lights. From Stafford International Elementary in the Wallingford yeah. area, our yeah. parents are like, look. All right, turn off. Okay. Yep. And it's a main button. You can see there are actually many functions on here. We can go to the map, shows you roughly where things are. There's lots of things. We could find charging stations like this. We could search like this. It'll search for different ones. It shows you the map and different charging stations nearby. We can go back to the menu. There's different kinds of, you can connect your smartphone. You can control the climate and air conditioning. It says it's off. That would be these buttons down here. If you turn them on like this, you can change the fan speed like this. It'll show you a graphic on the display to show you what your settings are. So if you change the mode, it would change where the air is going like that. This is the temperature controller, so you can set the temperature. It's been wintry cold in the morning, so I've been using the heat. That reduces the range. So if you use the HVAC, you can see the range went down from 160 to 140. If we turn that off, it'll go back up to 160. Okay, so we're in the radio setting. So if you go to audio like this, you have different presets in satellite radio, or you can go to an FM radio and you can go to your source. You can choose between AM like this or FM like that, or Sirius satellite radio, or you can go to USB through this USB port down here like this, or you can use a one eighth stereo input like that. There's a 12 volt outlet like this where there's 12 volt auxiliary power. And then they have buttons to go directly to the map or to your rear camera. This is just a setting. If you put the car in reverse, you can see that there's a backup camera that activates with, it shows you the outline of where the car will go. And now I'm gonna put it in park again by over here, show them. So it's in reverse and then 
shoot down like this. If you want to put the vehicle in park, you just press the park button and it resumes the map. If you go back to the main menu like this, you can toggle between different menus. It tells you the day and the date. You can go different previous destinations for your map. There's an audio sub menu. If you connect your phone, it's Bluetooth through the whole car. If you go to information, we can go to the main menu. If we go info like this, there's different information, streams, where you are, navigation, where your GPS, like if we go to the GPS, it tells you how it's calculating. If we go back to the main menu, we can go this way in the menus like this and just scroll through. It tells you the weather for today, different links to movies, stocks, music, sports, like that. And then your home screen. You I haven't set a home location. I don't want to set one. So if we go home, that's your basic navigation. There's also settings where you can adjust the display, for example, the brightness, the contrast, the background color. You can adjust sounds like the beep noise, the treble, uh, sound balance. Um, you can do navigation settings like the icons and settings like if you want to avoid stuff. Um, you can adjust the clock by increasing the time since it's daylight savings. I had to go forward an hour and one minute to get the clocks on the dashboard to match up. That's a basic overview of the interface of the computer. Thanks again for watching. Now we'll cut to an explanation of EV chargers. This is an EV charging station. You can see here there's an elapsed timer, the battery stated percentage, how long, how long is left. It doesn't read out the power though. There's status lights here, start and stop button. The enormous cable that connects the power, which is between 50 and 500 volts DC, connects here through the CHADMO connector, transferring up to 44,000 watts or 44 kilowatts of energy. This accomplishes charging up to five times faster than level two and up to 50 times faster than extension cord level one EVSE charging. This is a 2019 Nissan Leaf that I bought locally. And if you're interested in a Nissan Leaf, this is a second gen one, I highly recommend that you come down here to Bellevue Nissan and talk to Joey, the sales guy, or Ernesto. They've been excellent, thank you. All right, we're gonna have a look down below. So as we go down like this, You can see that it's a pretty clean sheet design underneath. Not much happening in terms of uh, visible parts. But if you get over into the suspension here, you can see, take a look at the bushings and the connectors. You can see the uh, brake caliper in here. And if you get at a, an oblique angle like this, you can zoom in and actually see the brake pad itself. That's it's, it's hard to do with the wheel position like this, but let's see if I can pop this in here like that. You can actually check the state of the brake pad by focusing down here. Like that, and you can see there's the rotor, there's a lot of brake pad left. From this angle, we can zoom in here. You can see there's tons, tons of brake pad left at 47,000 miles. The acrylic taillight housing here uh, features halogen incandescent lights, amber and clear. But we see the brake light here is a segmented reflector array too. And I'm unclear about the bulb technology. It's not visible per se, but imagine it's LED. We'll have to take a look at the specs to determine that. But if you look at the profile here, what they're doing is they're trying to cheat the wind. So this upper deck spoiler here reduces turbulence as air comes off the back and rolls. Instead of producing a turbulent zone, it smooths the laminar flow so that you don't get suction pulling on the car as it's trying to go forward. Most modern automobiles feature these aerodynamic tweaks, so the Nissan LEAF has done this extensively. This finned underskirt design here is a similar aerodynamic trick that's designed to smooth the airflow under the vehicle so that it slips through the air with less drag or impedance. 
in an electric vehicle that improves range. If you watch the roof line, I'm gonna do a pan. If you watch the roof line here, as air strikes the front of the vehicle, it's channeled over the front window and it's a conicalized smooth shape. And this is called a cam back. So it stays high and then drops off. Now the ideal shape would actually be completely squared off, but for practicality reasons, they don't do that. It would be ugly as hell and only the most esoteric of vehicles do that. So what you see in most automobile designs that are optimized for airflow is kind of an average. Now we see similar tricks happening with air that's channeled here. It forms a, a channel that goes around the headlight and then forms an angular deflector here. Now this is actually designed to cheat air around the side view mirror. So if you look here, this produces an airfoil shape that blocks turbulence in the exact profile shape of the side view mirror. And in essence, it's almost like removing the side mirrors by taking away the aerodynamic drag. And even the side mirrors have an extension. If you notice the, the way it's inset and the trim piece here, this is to reduce turbulent rollback. And so what you see is this is actually an aerodynamic mirror design. And a lot of these parts take inspiration from aircraft. Hey, you can see, since we started shooting film here, or video files, uh, we've accomplished 10 minutes of charging up to 74%. Now I would implore you never to use a fast charger beyond around 80%, 82, 83%, because if you do, it damages the battery. And especially on hot days, on cooler winter, spring, and fall days, level three charging doesn't damage the battery nearly as bad. But on hot winter days, uh, full charging at a high rate or a high C rate actually increases fading or damage to the battery pack. If we flip open the cover here, this is called a J1772 connector. Now this is the female. The male part is the kind that you have on a level two charging station typical at retail or at a wall installation at home over a 240 volt, 40 amp circuit, like a dryer circuit. And this features, uh, these feature locking connectors. So if you're charging, you can actually lock the receptacle on here so someone can't come along and unplug it. But go ahead and take a close look at these contacts here. This is, this is clever how they've done this. These, these standards are so that AC at 240 volts and up to 40 amps can enter the onboard 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger, which converts that power to DC at around 500 volts to accomplish charging the roughly 400 volt battery pack in the Nissan LEAF. And go ahead and take a close look at that connector like that. J1772 is pretty common on electric vehicles. And Nissan, thankfully, uses this Chatamo, uh, European charger design. I can't show you specifically, but Yazaki here uh, shows this DC fast charger connector as the manufacturer. And um, it has a very elaborate connector that I'll show in the next video segment. All right, so the target was 15 minutes. You can see we're closing in on 15 minutes. So what we're gonna do is hit the stop button like that. And you see the display change here in just a second. We got the 78% charge. And what we're gonna do now is come down here and disconnect this by pressing this button and pulling. And I wanna show you, first of all, the mail connector on the cable. So those are your DC. That's your positive and your negative. The other pins are for communication. And if you look, inside the female, you see two huge holes for the giant 500 volt, 44,000 watt DC, positive and negative there. While these eight other holes or at least seven of them are used for communication between the vehicle and the charger. And what this allows is what's called bypass. So the current entering the vehicle bypasses the onboard charging system and 
charges the battery pack directly. This is the Leafs uh, informatics display. We see 125 miles of range on 76 um, percent of battery charge. That's the telematics system or the infotainment system. It's so complicated I can't play with it right now, but um, you can see we get a really good energy economy at about 50 Fahrenheit. That's the aerodynamic crossover point for most vehicles. The steering wheel is rich with buttons too. We see lots of controls. That's the, the shifter and the e-pedal activation and eco button and the shift indicator. There's a USB port and an audio input port. That's the on-off button and then an automotive power jack, 12-volt jack. That's the HVAC controls there. No heated seats on this one. There's some physical buttons to access the computer, the menu, the map button, the day and night button, the audio, the camera. This has a backup camera, pretty cool. And then these switches over here are for the plug control the brightness of the display. And then the front windscreen helps you see out the vehicle.